Hi there everybody, Peter of England. Today's video is asking a question and it is, is paraphrased sometimes by this uh, three-letter combination, uh, what is going on in the world. Now, as most of you watching or following this channel will be aware, we always try and keep up with the times and since, for example, um, Peter of England uh, as a phenomenon started to broadcast on this, this YouTube channel uh, around about 11 years ago now. Um, we are Bank followed through as a most interesting platform for people who wanted to find out more about the nature, the creation and manipulation of money, economics and the financial markets. So being true to that policy, on and on we go, by trying to bring more innovative and more um, credible products to you as the years go by. And we have recently introduced something called the Good Samaritan Section 68 of the Bills of Exchange Act 1882 drafts, which in many instances should be more successful than they are, but unfortunately the stupidity, the deliberately engineered lower tier uh, stupidity of the um, administrative network which the banks and the administrative procedures of the, the market globally generally has put into place, what we're finding is there is some pushback by them saying we don't handle them, we don't know what it is, we don't know what it's for, we think it's something to do with Weir Bank when in fact it's nothing to do with Weir Bank at all. It's based on my personal circumstances offering to pay debts for you. What could be more uh, preferable? What could be more Christian? Um, but the reaction is typical for the nature of the world, the nature of the surrounding society in which we all live now, which is a Luciferian, satanically controlled monopoly, which gives no, um, no respite to you. It isn't there to help. It's there to, to crush and be aggressive and tyrannous with you. So where do we go from here? This um, video today is excusably for UK citizens only. The reason for that is for the information that we've got to part, impart to you, sorry, today, um, concerning um, the mechanics of the deception behind how you are living your life and how you are being told that you have to shoulder the group debt of the United Kingdom particularly. So for those of you who are in uh, other reaches like the Commonwealth countries, um, those of you who are in the United States, we're not really there to deal with you today <clears throat> as we go forward in the future. Hopefully we'll get something for you there. But for now, it is of particular concern for the, how should we say, uh, the citizenry of the United Kingdom. And these citizens of the United Kingdom um, all have one thing in common. If they are working or not, they have a... Um, uh, a national insurance number. It's called an NIN, national insurance number, social security number in the United States. So for all of those people um, in the United Kingdom, you might not be aware of the central point here um, and something called the, the national debt. And that is something you are supposedly um, owing and owing who to, we will find out now. But Above all of that, what we have is this situation or scenario here uh, of HMRC, which stands for Her Majesty's or His Majesty's now, Revenue and Customs. And here we've got HM Treasury, which is His Majesty's Treasury. Two different arms of the government, but they are no longer part of the government since 2005, particularly when the Inland Revenue merged with the customs. And so what we had is inland revenue, uh, customs and excise merging together in 2005. So regardless of what you think, of regardless of what HMRC are billing you for on the taxes, 
They are a private company now, no longer part of the government. Why should that be of any concern to you? Well, HMRC uh, are the people who collect the taxes. So whether it's your council tax, your VAT, uh, PAYE, capital gains tax, taxes uh, for the sale of products generally within the United Kingdom, um, uh, income, income and corporation taxes generally, and the entire, uh, the entire fan of um, taxation in the United Kingdom is run by these guys. HM Treasury, um, I think they're located at One Horse Guards Parade. They're supposed to be the exchequer. These are the ones who take care of the foreign payments and all things, shall we say, governmental in nature. But equally, these characters here are hand in hand with these here, and they are jointly organized and run um, by some organization here, uh, which is called the Debt Management Office. So I would advise most of you who've never heard of this to go and have a look, do a search on Google and see what it's about. Now, why the video today? Because I know people get the idea of flicking to the end or saying, well, get to the point. What I am looking to do today is to address something that has been hidden from you, kept from you, and it is something called um, a HMRC account. And the HMRC account is a personal account a private account that you are completely unaware of, but has been opened for you from your 16th birthday or the time when you applied in the United Kingdom for a national insurance number. So that's what we're looking at. What is going on here? Um, why is it connected to this national debt? Um, and for those people who aren't aware of what you're supposed to be owing in this national debt, um, from the UK perspective, it's around about three trillion. That's the official figure. Uh, if you want to have a look and how, see how fast that is actually spinning, minute by minute or second by second, you can go into what's called the UK debt clock and you will see how much the United Kingdom government is, is racking up its debt. All of these countries, the UK, Canada, even Germany, Spain, Portugal, the United States in particular, own massive amounts of debt. So they are technically, technically, let's put this here, technically in bankruptcy. So what does that mean to you? It means that, for example, if you were trading and operating in the same manner in which these countries are operating and in local councils and local government in many instances, you would be prosecuted if your um, accountant, um, if you didn't stop trading the moment they said that you were insolvent and you were continuing to trade as if you weren't, that is fraudulent. And so what they're perpetrating on you is a fraud. Now, you might say, well, that's just how the world is. But what I'm asking you is, today to do something where you turn your head around and say, well, that's not how it should be. Let's start digging and finding out some of these truths or truisms and operating on them. We need to start practicing something called creative dissent. And so today what I'm going to do uh, for all of those people who are with me now up until this point and all the members of Weirbank, I'm going to show you this account that is with a bank in London that has your national insurance um, details on it. It has a sort code, um, it has an IBAN number, it has a, an account number, and it has an address. And so this is for you if you want to start to take advantage of this by saying, these people have been practicing some type of subterfuge on me. I am now willing to find out exactly what's behind it and what it means to me. Many of you, if you go on to Google search, type in, um, I think you type in um, UK Treasury or HM Treasury and just put in, um, is it possible to pay a debt with a national insurance number or 
a birth certificate. And you will find a 2019 pronouncement by them where they maintained that, no, it was in fact impossible to do that. Many of you who are in a, uh, um, a frame of research uh, ideology where you know that something's going on and you know that there are bonds and trusts operating in the background, you've all been told quite categorically there is no chance at all for these things being true uh, or existing in any meaningful way. So what we're doing now is actually showing you categorically, irrefutably, inalienably, that these characters, HMRC, in collusion with these here, in collusion with these debt management people, in collusion, therefore, with the 560 hyenas in the Houses of Parliament, are operating a funding and financing system behind the scenes, and it's linked to you. Right, so you, following this bankruptcy after the Second World War, 1944, are welded in as chattel guarantor surety property for the debt. So, what is this debt? Well, for the UK, it's around about um, three trillion. So, what I'd like to do now is to tell you how it's, it's apportioned. So, this this debt, um, just to give it a perspective, depending on whether you're a taxpayer or just a citizen. So if you're a, if you're a, whoopah. If you're a uh, taxpayer, then it's 80,000. That's what the United Kingdom government say as far as owing money is concerned. And if you then divide it into the citizenry, you will find that it's around about 40. And this is all connected with something called GDP, gross domestic product. That is in effect a economic lie or calculation dependent upon what side of the road or side of the the fence you are, which says that the, um, the economic powerhouse for the goods and services that the country or an enterprise produces are valued at. So this GDP means that many countries many years ago had, uh, were, were basically profitable. They were in credit. But since 1944, most of the countries of the world have been economically driven into debt for paying private um, central banks, of which the Bank for International Settlements, the IMF, the World Bank, are the head of the food chain. So someone, somewhere, and this is what you might want to ask yourself, whether you're a taxpayer or not, um, how did, let's say, uh, as a taxpayer, we'll stick with those for, for now. As a taxpayer, how did you get lumbered with £80,000 uh, sterling um, on your account? Now, that's not obviously anything to do with the value of your mortgage debt, your credit card debt, your financing, your car loans, the taxes you have to pay day to day just to live and eat. But on top of that, somebody's welded 80000 onto your back. And that 80,000 is across the board, as I say, for the tax base. So you really need to start asking how and why what's going on, which is what I'm leading up to now is the, the way to be creatively uh, dissentful of this situation and now to start relieving yourself of paying things like um, your council tax, your PAYE, capital gains tax, probate type of taxes, business taxes, and any other tax that you can think of in the, in the public domain that um, requires paying, and also to an extent something more uh, insidious. Who is this debt actually owed to? Because these figures here are quite interesting. This national debt here 
is in effect owed, used to be um, regulated by this debt management office. Previously, in the old days, up until about, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, the Bank of England was still in control of it. But according now to this organization, the breakdown is of this national debt of three trillion, 50% of it is owed to the Bank of England. Okay. 20% is owed to foreign holders. Read probably the five largest um, hedge fund equity companies in the world, and 30% to, um, sorry, 50% is to the Bank of England, 20% to foreign holders, and 30% to private corporations. So what does it mean by private corporations? That means Corporations that, in effect, have bought treasuries or gilts or financial instruments to include in part of their, their pension or management funds uh, for profitability. And so you can easily dissect this, add it all together. It's owned to the Rothschild Warburg International Banking Commune, which is, in effect, the IMF, the World Bank and the Bank for International Settlements. So it's all circular. That's the point. It's circular. And like in a bad marriage, you are the last to know about the affair that your husband or your wife is involved in. So what I'm trying to do today is to broaden your, your horizons on this uh, and try and say to you, right, this is a scenario. How do we head it off, and in effect, why haven't you been told? So what we have then for you, if you've got a national insurance number, we can provide you therefore with the sort code, the account number, the IBAN and BIC, Swift code and the address and location of the bank. So this is what we are doing now for all members uh, of We are Bank. We are inviting them to come along and produce themselves. We will supply this their own their own uh, checkbook. So. In the past, what's happened with you when we had the Weir Bank checks, when we began in 2015, in uh, March, April 2015, we had great success, but then over the period of time, what happened is um, the banks would come back and say, the sort code isn't recognized. Um, this bank doesn't exist. The account number isn't correct. We can't find it. We don't accept it. We've seen that the FCA have said something about Weir Bank. Well, as we've gone on, we've tried to challenge the system greater and greater to, to a greater degree until we get to a point now where as we are coming to a almost end of time scenario, a Kali Yuga phase of the planetary cycle or just inherently looking like it's all going to pop, um, what we're doing now is bringing the challenge closer to their door because with this account, with this account for UK citizens with a national insurance number, this account has been set up for you by the HMRC, the government, and whether they've done it or not, maybe you can say, so what the hell, they can do anything they want, but they haven't told you. It can't be an accident because if we put the numbers of your national insurance number in with the sort code, it generates automatically a valid account, which you can go and search on the internet through sortcodes.uk or ibanchecker. So what we have then is a bit of an impasse, a bit of a lie detector session here. HMRC and HM Treasury, in fact, are saying that you've got no account in the background. The validity of anything to do with the birth certificate 
where maybe the family name has been copyrighted on the birth certificate and now what you're holding is a proof of a lien or a financial transaction or a warehouse or bond receipt that they are trading internationally on stock markets, in banks, hmm, you know, so none of that's true. Forget all that, you know, please move along, nothing to see here. However, with this, not only do we have bullets on the table, we have a gun that's smoking. And so with that, I would suggest you use your creative intelligence to do whatever you desire with this book. So it'll be, uh, uh, the link will be uh, below uh, in the description. You need to go to removement.net. That's www.removement.net. Go onto the, the shop there and you will see the product on display. We'll put that under um, a, a, an obvious name and not uh, um, a, 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 an identifier for you so you can see that. So this is really what we're about. We're trying to make these people here accountable for this bankruptcy. The national debt is the thing that's choking everyone. Technically speaking, if they're trading with this national debt, and I assure you that that's a fact, they are. If the second point is that you and your neighbor cannot pay it, yeah, as a taxpayer, you have to come up with 80,000 cash. If you are just, let's say, a citizen, therefore you can target everyone from a toddler through to an old age pensioner, it comes in at only 40. If that can't be paid, then the country, as all countries are, are operating in bankruptcy. And just as a final giveaway there, if you want to consider what that means, many of the local government organizations, um, I can put this, I think, here, look at, Look uh, under the local government, I think it's Local Government Act 19, I don't know, 85, 89, something like that. You will see that there's a section 114 of the Local Government Act, which prohibits local councils, full stop, trading or conducting business when they are bankrupt. These clowns up here, the debt management office of the, the Treasury, um, I think it's the Treasury, are supposed to supervise this. Um, and so with this book in your hand, I would suggest that you first look and challenge any local government authority or borough council by asking them what their balance or financial statements are for this, this pending period, which would be um, 22-23, and what their projected budget is, whether they will be solvent through 23, 24. And if under a freedom of information request or just a general request initially, they either don't uh, supply it or say that they can't or don't know, you can make a certain assumption that they're hiding something or with a freedom of information request, they have to tell you. So if they're possibly going to be trading at a deficit, then under that section, you do not have to deal with them because they are violating the law and it's their own law. These aren't ones that have been superstitiously made up by my, myself or, or, or anyone else. So what I would say to you now is uh, rewind parts of this video if you need to. Um, uh, look at the incidents here of obtaining this, this checkbook so it will be your own personal checkbook based on your account with your sort code for the bank, which is Citibank, which is an American bank, by the way. I think it's uh, the 15th largest bank in the United States. But questions, therefore, have to be, well, why is Citibank involved in holding an HMRC, uh, UK government direct taxation account for all um, people in the United Kingdom 
that have got a national insurance number. And I think that's most people have got a national insurance number. So collectively, we can put some, um, some turbulence into the system here. And for those, who you, uh, those of you who are a little bit more um, uh, accustomed to writing or communicating with some of these organizations, you can even challenge them onto what is the validity or the meaning of it is. For those of you additionally out there who want to start doing some digging, you can maybe try and find out how much is in these accounts uh, and um, make some freedom of information requests and use it most diligently to now pay off various debts or bills that you, you supposedly are, um, are lumbered with and you've been given to shoulder based really on the creation of, of this here. This is what's been created to, to load you down. And if this is owed, if it is owed, who's it actually owed to? And the answer is the Bank of England. Foreign holders and private corporations. If you know about the the the, the, the uh, the incidence of ownership of corporate uh, integrity worldwide, you'll see that most of it is owned by five major um, hedge funds. And with that in mind, that means that this is owned by those hedge funds who are in turn owned by Rothschild Banking Warburg Interests, who are in turn owners of the Bank of England as a private corporation, as is the Federal Reserve. And so with all of that, you're being conned, you're, be, you're being duped, you're being led down a road that you no longer need to go down. And with the world fast drifting into an ap apocalyptic Armageddon type ending, then why not now grab yourself something, an instrument that you can do something with and start to bring a little bit of uh, sincerity to um, the, 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 the protocol or the, um, shall we say, the, the, the pantomime that they've laid on you and led you down. So um, the, the real question then is who's paying for all the trouble, all the conflict in the world? Who's supplying the, the, the weaponry in Ukraine? Who's funding and uh, outfitting Hamas, Hezbollah, ISIS, ISIL? Um, the question is obvious. It is the banking organizations who've taken control of the, of the world. You know it. You don't need me to tell you. Um, I would also state, say to you as a, as a concluding aspect here, maybe go to Area 52 area52.life, www.area52.life, and look at the means that we are also providing you with there to try and disconnect from this duplic duplicitous, Luciferian, Masonic-controlled, death grip society that's been welded around you and trying to put some, uh, some distance between you and it before it's too late and while you still have opportunity. So please pass the video around, rewind it, look at the various sections that I've referred to, and I would suggest now go to um, www.removement.net and look for this under the, the uh, monogram there of city, and that is the lead for you to start doing something with a legitimate account that no bank can refuse to take the check from you because of any contention that the sort code doesn't exist. It's not an FCA regulated bank. Uh, we can't accept that type of payment. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It's one of theirs. And what you've done is you've been given a key to the back door. And it, from that point on, your detective worth begins. Thank you very much. Peter of England saying thank you.